Hey guys, and welcome to a brand new series. We're going to be playing RimWorld. As you can see, the subtitle is A Colony Simulator. <laughs> and that's really what it is. It's very hard to explain unless you've played games like it, but for those of you out there who have played games like um, Dwarf Fortress or No Moria or things like that, there is some similarities. Um, Difficulty is key in games like these, and losing is fun. It's all about trying to get to the end, and the funny stories that comes along with that. Uh, alternatively, you can play it as a sandbox and try and create the perfect colony, uh, which is pretty fun on its own. But we're going to be playing a pretty standard game, so I'm going to hop straight into things. Um, rather than try and explain anymore, because I'm terrible explaining decent at showing. <laughs> if we look at mods, because of course I've modded it, um, we are going to be using the Community Core Library, the Colony Manager, the Expanded Prosthetics and Organs mod. Um, this allows you to create your own prosthesis for your colonists. This is probably just all a total um, word dump to some of you. <laughs> But uh, we've got Prepare Carefully. We won't be using Prepare Carefully, though, for this series. We've got RT Fuses, which lets you create fuse boxes. Uh, we've got Efficient Lights, which makes the standard lights in vanilla RimWorld cost less in power to run. We have Extended Storage, which allows us to create storage mediums other than just dropping things on the ground. We have more trade ships, which incre increases the rate at which uh, galactic trade ships come by the planet. We have ED Embrasures, which is a mod that allows us to create uh, stone embrasures. They're impassable to movement, but allow you to be allow the colonists to shoot through them. We have Redistribute Heat. Uh, this is a mod that because the game simulates a lot of things, it has a whole heat and cold system, and this adds some more functionality to that. We have more vanilla turrets, as the name suggests, it adds more vanilla turrets. Um, we have Reclaim Fabric, which allows you to break down unused clothing back into fabric. We have Extended Medicine, which allows you to craft medicine, other than the basic... Um, My god, I've lost my words. <laughs> Other than the basic uh, herbal medicine. And right tool for the job, which allows us to create tools for our colonists. So a lot of these uh, will probably make the experience a little bit easier. But they also, in my opinion, make it a little bit more fun. Because it's just a, a richer experience in general. So, let's go to new colony. Let's jump into things. We want to take Crash Landed. We could alternatively do the Rich Explorer, which means you start with one colonist only. Uh, and that colonist is all you will have um, for a long while. But they start with so much more and their technology level is a lot higher. The tech level uh, of your colony depends on how fast you research things. And we'll get into that too. There's a lot of things to learn if you're just watching this for the first time but stick around if you like my minecraft series because it's got some similarities uh, we've got the lost tribe um, you start with five people instead of three or one um, and you start with a lot of low tech stuff but your technology level is quite low um, but we will be going with the standard crash landed this first series for RimWorld on this channel is going to be very standard. <laughs> we might experiment with some things later on the line, depending on how this series goes. But um, for right now, we're going with a pretty standard loadout. So, being that we're going with a standard loadout, we're going to go with uh, Cassandra Classic on Rough. The Storyteller is a AI which determines the events which happen to your colony. You have Cassandra, who, as you can see, um, creates story events on a steadily increasing curve of challenge and tension. You have Phoebe Chillax. Phoebe gives lots of time between disasters to relax and build your colony, but beware, if she's set to a high challenge scale, she'll hit just as hard as anyone. And Randy Random. 
Randy doesn't follow the rules, he'll generate random events and he doesn't care if they make the story a triumph or an utter hopelessness. It's all drama to him. <laughs> so we're going to go with the pretty standard Cassandra classic and we're going to go with Rough. Right. So this is our world generation. We'll go with the maximum size world just to make sure that I get as many options as possible. And one, two, three, four, five. Triumph. That's a good start. <laughs> All right. So this is our world. That's a pretty cool looking world, actually. Um, the temperature scale is north cold, south hot. Uh, and each of these different fields of color, like here and 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 here is a different biome. Uh, the different sizes of rocks determines the elevation of the area, roughly. So this is a plains, this is hills, and this is mountains. Uh, is there anything else immediately visible? This is water. You can't start in water. <laughs> um, this is a hostile colony. It's a pirate band. Uh, you can't start on other colonies for obvious reasons. Or I'd like to think they're pretty obvious reasons. Maybe some people would like to start on top of another colony. I don't know how you would survive though. Do we have any... We can uh, turn things on here. Or can we? Biomes, elevation, full, rainfall, temperature. This shows you the temperature map. It's crazy. This is the coldest it gets way up here in these mountains. Um, in winter, it's minus neg <laughs> it's negative 77 degrees. I don't know what that is in Fahrenheit. I'm sorry. Uh, and the hottest area on our map is in these areas. Where in summer, it's 34 degrees. Which is pretty hot. Yeah. So we probably want to go somewhere around the center of the map if we're trying to min-max things. Uh, here's elevation. Similar map. That shows you the elevation of the area. So we've got some mountains. You can kind of see the ridges forming down here. And the mountainous areas over here and here. Uh, rainfall. This shows you where rain likes to fall a lot. Here's a lot of rain. Here's not very much rain. <laughs> um, why haven't I shown you? Biomes. Well, we know what biomes is, but I was looking for a very specific one, which I don't seem to be able to find. Which I showed you these, but you can also see the, um, the nice people on the map. And what has me worried is that there is no nice people on the map. <laughs> uh, that would be a disaster. Well, not really, but it, it would be annoying. Um, cool. So, with I think that explanation out of the way, I'm going to try and find a nice spot for us to start, and I will return. While looking around, I found another one of the normal colonies. Despite being green, it just means they're neutral. <laughs> they are Barrow of the Mountain, a tribe. It's not very mountainous here, Barrow. Anyway, I shall return. All right, so here's a pretty middle of the road location for us. We have a mountainous area, fairly close to a coastline, and it is marble, granite, and slate rock types. This is important because we want strong rock types. Um, it's mountainous, it's a temperate forest. Uh, it will get down to about 7.9 degrees C in winter. And it will be 23.2 degrees C in summer. So, pretty middle of the road, which is what we're looking for. We want to go to advanced though, because we're going to go on a large map. Yes, I like large maps. They're a lot more fun to me. More room to create chaos. Alright, so select the site. And now we're on to uh, creating our colonists. Now, in the interest of the series... I have decided that I get 10 re-rolls per character. Uh, this is completely arbitrary and you don't have to do this kind of thing, but 
Um, you have, unless you use prepare carefully, which we're not going to do, uh, the game creates three random, what they call pawns, um, but they're your, they're your colonists. And these three random pawns have randomized stats, randomized backstory, randomized capabilities, randomized traits, you get the idea, and randomized health. Like, this guy has cryo sleep, sleep sickness, but this counselor has a scratch scar on their torso. So, I have ten randomizations. I have to pick the one which I think is going to go best. I don't have to use all ten. I can only have a maximum of 10. So if number 11 is terrible, then we've got to take number 11. So here goes. What I'm after for my first character, or any character really, is in the beginning we want someone who's probably pretty good at construction, uh, someone who's pretty good at growing, and someone who's pretty good at combat. Um, research and medicine are secondary objectives. So, let's go. This person is excellent at construction, not capable of intellectual or cooking, uh, has a bad back. Uh, lover of Miriam now, but that's likely to change because we're going to randomize now, probably. However, <laughs> while he is cold tolerant, which is nice, he is a psychopath, which is bad. <laughs> uh, no empathy. The suffer of, uh, of suffering of others doesn't bother him at all. He doesn't mind if others are butchered, left unburied, imprisoned, or sold to slavery unless it affects him. He also feels no mood boost from socializing. This is terrible because socializing is a really important a aspect of the game. If your colonists um, become too depressed, then they will have a mental break. Uh, and a mental break means they can either do something as harmless as wandering around aimlessly uh, and being unproductive to lighting your buildings on fire or trying to kill your other colonists. Um, so, <laughs> while this guy is excellent at construction, uh, the fact that nobody can... Um, psychopath can actually be very useful. However... The fact that nobody can soothe him by giving him social contact means that he might be more likely to have uh, quite a few problems in the future. He's also um, interested in construction, but we probably want somebody who is passionate about construction, which is what these flames here are. Um, it determines the speed in which the pawn learns uh, things. So. Even though the first roll was good here, the other thing's not so good. So let's keep going. This person is extremely old. No. Three. Uh, passionate, but low construction. Um, otherwise, not very good. <laughs> Four. Um, no. Five. No. Six, mining, artistic, medicine, melee, not capable of dumb labor, we don't want that. Seven, ooh, you're good at melee. Eight, <laughs> this is bad, this is very, very bad. Uh, nine, crafting. But no construction and can't work on plants. That's not so bad. Um, even bloodlust's not so bad. But, oh, oh, I don't know. No, nine. Growing, passionate, five. Five is not quite what we want. We probably want to start somewhere around six or seven. But I'm literally not able to re-roll this character after the next roll, and if the next roll is terrible. <sighs> okay. Um... Just 
She's not capable of intellectual, violent, artistic, or crafting. Which means all of these she won't do. No. Ten. Well. It's not actually... Not actually horrible. Yes, they are. They're awful. Pyromaniac is terrible because if this person gets in a bad mood, they'll light things on fire anyway. Um, doesn't even have to be a bad mental break. They'll just, they'll just light things on fire. <laughs> so, well, that's who we're going to go with. So that's that. Okay. So next. What role do you kind of fill? Nothing really. I mean, you... No. <laughs> Nothing really. Mining's okay. But otherwise... Uh, yeah, who knows. This person's very middle of the road. Anyway, uh, moving right along. Fabio, you're good at social and shooting. Ooh, that's a good shooting score, actually. So... Our next pawn will probably have to be both the constructor and the grower. <laughs> you are interested in growing, but you've got a four in it. Mm. You're incapable of scary things. I can't remember what scary is. And you're incapable of cooking. Scary doesn't mean they won't fight, but I can't remember what scary actually is. Bloodlust and neurotic. Neurotic is terrible. We're not going to go with them. That was the first re- yeah, it was the first re-roll. Um, I hope it was the first re-roll. <laughs> Construction, good. Medicine, good. Uh, not capable of intellectual, social, artistic, or firefighting. No, you're terrible. Uh, that's so bad, okay. 11 medicine, 12 melee, 7 crafting. Crafting's not the one we want. Construction is the one we want. That was two, three. Uh, no. Although you are incapable of none is really good in green thumb. The only terrible thing is ugly, which means that uh, people are going to have trouble socializing with her. Four. The reason I didn't go with her is because she didn't have the skills that we kind of need to start with. Um, five. No. Six. Seven. Come on, game. Don't do this to me. <laughs> Eight. Another good shooter. Social's decent. You're not capable of dumb labor, which is really bad because we need people who can haul. Uh, hauling is really important in the early game, so we can't go with them. Eight. What was that eight? Oh no, I'm bad at counting. Nine. No. Ten. That's it. That's who we have to go with. Not capable of dumb labor. They're a nudist, so they don't like wearing clothes, which makes everyone else upset. They're too smart, which means they learn things quickly, but they're more prone to breaking. Not capable of crafting or cooking. <laughs> I'm not having good rolls. This is terrible. This series is probably going to end in disaster. Who knows? Um, okay, you. You have to be the most divine character we have ever rolled. You are good at managing. This is a mod thing. Um, or passionate about managing, actually. But you're very old. So, no. The reason I don't like taking old characters is because they get a lot... They get sicker easier and they have more ailments to begin with. Uh, which makes them harder to manage early on. It doesn't matter so much when you've got a colony which is built up a bit, but um, in the early game, no, not a good idea. 
maybe for a gimmick run, but not not for this middle of the road run we're going for. Alright. It's three. Four. Five. Come on, just give me someone who's decent at either growing or construction. Six. Seven. Eight. <laughs> Nine. Ten. We're doomed. We're so doomed. Okay, well, you know, I thought ten was giving myself too many re-rolls per character, but turns out it's not enough. This is our characters, and what we're going to do... I can't give this person a... A, 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 a... What do you call it? This is calling it a short identifier nickname. I don't know why I can't give you a nickname. Maybe that means you don't have one. Yeah, it means you don't have one. Alright, that's good. So this next, next bit, <laughs> um, we are going to give everyone a nickname. And if you've got this far into the video, this is the fun part. Because what I want from you guys is, I want you to comment and watch the Rimworld series. And what I'll do is I'll name new colonists after you guys. Cool. So I'm going to pick random comments from the uh, videos that I've made and any new colonists that come along, we're going to give them names based on those comments. But for the first three, we're going to name them after... Oh, well, we may as well just... Here we go. Rex. Rex the sculptor. Who's a space miner? Geneticist. Who's a geneticist? Hmm. Who do I know who are a space miner and a geneticist? Well, a space miner can be linked to Minecraft, so let's go with Direwolf. A geneticist is kind of like a coder, right? So we'll go with Atomic Blom. Atomic Blom. Doesn't fit. So we'll just go with Atomic. <laughs> atomic B. So we got Direwolf. Will the 20 go in there? No. Direwolf 2. <laughs> yeah, Direwolf 2. There we go. Direwolf 2, Rorax, and Atomic B. Cool. Start. The three of you awake in your cryosleep sarcophagi to the sound of sirens and ripping metal. You barely get to the escape pods before the ship is torn apart. Sometime later, you land on this unknown rim world. As pieces of the shredded starship fall around you, you start to make plans to survive. Yes, we do. And it's going to be quite difficult. <laughs> All right. So our pods break open. The stuff that was in the pods with us comes out. This X on these items means that it is forbidden, which means they are not going to interact with it until I tell them to. But we are going to tell them to almost immediately. So... Let's get some information on our characters. It's not the one I wanted. Character. Shooting 3, 11, 4. Okay, 4 gets the pistol. 11 gets the survival rifle. And I get the plasteel knife. Great. <laughs> At least all of us can fight. Sometimes you get characters who can't fight. I think we rolled one of those. Then I'm going to unforbid all this stuff. This is your food that you start with. Obviously this is wood. This is steel. Which we don't want to use very much of in the beginning. And this is silver and these are components and medicine. Components are used for uh, machinery. Steel is also used for machinery. It can also be used as a structural material. And medicine is obviously used to treat sickness in your characters. So, we've actually got a pretty decent area around here. So, it's mountainous, which means there's lots of grooves and pockets that we can potentially build around. Like this one here is pretty cool. Uh, we've got a geothermal vent in there. We've got some choke points here. This big structure here is probably something 
terrible inside. Um, so we're not going to be cracking open that anytime soon. But we can block these things off anyway. Um, make them into our choke points and we'll have some living space in here. We'll put some living space out here as well. But for now, I think we'll live in here. Uh, because we can work on some more stuff around these areas. Maybe we'll move into this area actually. Because we've got some natural chokes in here as well. And up there. This top of this area is quite open. So, in making that decision, we need to start clearing our way for our building operations. Building operations. Operations that are required in order to build things. Those operations. So, hmm. I think what we'll do is we're immediately going to mark these things for deconstruction. They are pieces of our starship that fell down with us. Um, and they will give us more components and steel to start with. But we also want them out of the way so that we can build things more easily in this space. But um, I think also the first thing we need to do is create a storeroom. I would plonk it right in the middle of here. But this is decent farmland. So maybe we'll plonk it right down here. Because you can't... Uh, build on top of slate anyway. Slate is excellent. I'm glad we've started an area next to slate because I believe slate is the hardest stone. Also takes a long time to mine because of that, but um, let's see actually. Slate is 500. Do we see any granite? Yes, we do. 900. Granite's harder. <laughs> wonder where I got the idea that slate is harder. But it is harder than marble, that's for sure. That's fine, we'll just have to go and mine out some granite later. Okay, anyway. Let us start with storage. Actually, we're not going to start with storage. I think this is an excellent spot for us to uh, wrap up here. Right on the precipice of starting our awesome colony with Direwolf 2, Rorax, and Atomic B. <laughs> and colonists who come in the future. So thank you all for watching and I hope you stick around. Bye bye!